Hi, I'm Gail Mason, and here I am standing in front of the beautiful Falkirk Cultural Center in San Rafael. The estate is now owned by the city of San Rafael. The Master Gardeners of Marin have a working relationship whereby we have installed seven demonstration gardens. Some of them are really tiny, some are much bigger, but all of them show important elements in how to grow a healthy garden in this area. I want to introduce you and to take you into our fabulous succulent garden here at Falkirk. One of the things you'll notice right away when you walk through the garden is the extraordinary number of plants, sizes, shapes, textures, colors, believe it or not. So it's a beautiful garden in terms of just visually, but also it really exhibits a lot of elements of successful succulent gardening, which is to say, it's a very porous soil. It's got, uh, we have this beautiful tree that's providing some afternoon shade, which is what succulents actually like. And there are also some elements here of fire-safe gardening. For example, this pebbled walkway through the middle is a great fire break. And also, all of the mulch in succulent gardens is pebbles or stones or rocks, so it's not flammable. It's a perfect opportunity to walk through here and see which ones strike your fancy that you might want to grow at home. So I'd like to show you just briefly, one of the gardens called the California Diversity Gardens. This garden is one of three very particularly delineated gardens as uh, beneficial habitat gardens. This one focuses on uh, having, making sure that there are plants blooming all year long, so there's something in here for creatures to eat uh, throughout the year. So here we are at the entrance to the Mediterranean Garden. Uh, come on, come and join me. We share here in California uh, a Mediterranean climate with four other places, Chile, South Africa, Australia, and the Mediterranean Basin. And we represent, those of us who have that climate, represent 2% of the world's population, so it's a very small group. All of the plants in this garden uh, are plants that could grow at your house. In other words, these are all not native to California, but they're native to somewhere that has a very similar climate. So it's a great opportunity to come in and look around and see what strikes your fancy. And you could plant them at home. Hi, so here we are now entering into the California native garden, which is uh, tucked within the larger Mediterranean garden. This is a great garden to come and look at uh, what California natives look like when they're growing um, in a garden and it also has the advantage of having this one big branch of an oak tree so you can see also what California natives you could plant under an oak tree. Since all the plants are labeled you can come and find something that strikes your fancy. Of course California natives will grow at your place if they grow here. A garden that's planted to be a habitat garden provides year-round food for bees, butterflies, birds, and other beneficial creatures, lady beetles. It has a rotating group of plants that flower um, or have berries, so it feeds creatures. It also We also have water. Always in all the gardens we have a a bird bath or sometimes a butterfly bath. Uh, and then there's shelter. So there are empty spaces or logs that are falling apart. Anything that can supply a habitat, you're essentially welcoming the creatures in by having the environment be very much what they're looking for. Hi there. I want to welcome you right now into this teeny tiny tucked away moon garden, uh, which is right next to the historic greenhouse. And what's special about a moon garden is all the plants are either white or gray-green or variegated. So the idea of a moon garden is that evening falls and you go out and sit in the moon garden and the plants glow in the moonlight. So coming here and watching this sitting here uh, during a full moon is really spectacular. So now I want to show you this 
very small garden. It's a xeroscape garden. Xeroscaping means planting things that get no water or very little water. In this garden, we planted on purpose to demonstrate it, it is no irrigation at all on this garden, so the only water it gets is from the sky when it rains. Now I'm sitting in our latest garden that we created and installed. Uh, it's, we're calling it the Serenity Garden. And it could also be called the COVID Garden because I started planting this the second week in May. So this whole Serenity Garden is in fact uh, planted primarily as a place to sit and relax and reflect and also to watch the incredible number of bees and monarchs and birds, lots of activity going on here. So this is a wonderful place to come and just watch the action. It's a really buzzing spot. So there's something else that would be good for you to know about, which is how do we maintain these gardens? It's a lot of work, right? Maintaining the gardens is all done by volunteers. But most of them are master gardeners. We love having people from the public come and work and help us maintain the gardens. You'll learn about the plants, you'll meet other people that love the plants. So all the gardens here at Falkirk are water-wise. They're all habitat gardens, one way or the other. All of them have a tremendous amount of diversity that could be planted anywhere locally. So come and join us.